Dynamic Disk Designs introduces dynamic spine modeling in association with upright MRI. This is an MRI study using the upright phonar unit, 0.6 Tesla. You can see we have four different images on the screen, all mid-sagittal, T2 weighted without contrast. On the left we have recumbency. Adjacent to that we have upright neutral, flexion, and extension. For some basic anatomy, we have vertebral bodies, intervertebral discs, spinal cord, cerebral spinal fluid, and we have the spinous processes. Dynamic imaging can play a significant role in revealing where possible pain generators are, which is often where patients have symptoms. Often they have symptoms either sitting, standing, bending a certain way, and not so often lying down, although when there is significant inflammation, often patients will have pain lying down as well. So in this case, if you compare the recumbency to upright neutral, there are several things that are quite obvious. For one, the cervical curve, which makes sense. As you lie down, the curve should flatten. Also noticeable is C6-7. We can actually see disc protrusion. With a flexion study, what is revealed is an anterolisthesis of C4 on C5, or grade 1, with an associated disc bulge. And you can see that the C6-7 disc protrusion actually diminishes as the posterior annulus takes up tension. An extension, you can see at C6-7, the disc bulges even more, and the anterolisthesis disappears. Although we do see significant disc bulging at that level. We also see the ligament flavum buckle into the canal. And if you go back to the upright neutral, you can see this, but it's not as defined as in extension. So therefore, typical recumbent MRI may not reveal certain pain generators. For example, a hyperintense zone seen at C6 with significant disc protrusion and an instability or hypermobility, not necessarily unstable, but a hypermobility at C4-5, which can also be a pain generator. So these findings suggest that we have this area as a possible pain generator, discogenic, as well as a discogenic pain generator in the posterior annulus, seen more so in extension. Shown here is our professional CXH model, C56, without the ALL and PLL for demonstration purposes. You can demonstrate flexion and extension. And it's very helpful to have patients understand clearly where suspected pain generators are under their range of motion or their particular activities 
that cause their pain. To allow even greater understanding, a custom model was designed to expose visualization of the nucleus and the annulus as well as the ligament flavum to help understand flexion loading and how extension loading will cause the ligament flavum to move into the spinal canal as well as the posterior annulus. Now, with a radial tear induced in the posterior annulus, flexion loading will cause the nucleus to push posteriorly through the annulus and into the spinal canal. This is helpful when explaining the progressive nature associated with disc herniation.